Amen. Thank you, ladies. Remember to pray for Richard uh, Taylor. His brother, twin brother, passed away this uh, last week. Uh, the funeral will be on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Visitation from 12 to 2 at Urban Good Funeral Home. And so remember to pray for Richard uh, throughout this, this week. It'll be a great blessing to him. It's great to see him this morning. Let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Psalms and turn with me to Psalm 144. Psalm 144. I did a personal study uh, on my own time on happiness and I wanted to know what the Bible had to say about being happy. God wants us to be happy people. And so I wanted to know what the Word of God had to say about being happy. And uh, our study will begin this morning in Psalm 144. We'll begin our reading uh, in verse number 1 together. Psalm 144, and we'll read uh, verse 1. We'll end in verse 15. We'll read the entire chapter, and we'll notice what the Bible has to say. Psalm 144, verse 1 the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he is whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like to vanity, his days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down, touch the mountains that they shall smoke, cast forth lightning and scatter them, shoot out thine arrows and destroy them, send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of the great waters and from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O Lord, upon the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speak as vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our children may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace, that our gardeners may be full according to all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, I pray you would help us as we look at this passage of Scripture. And Lord, there, there's a wonderful truth for us to learn. I pray we would have ears to hear this morning. I pray, Father, that you would bind Satan and his demons. I pray your word would fall on good ground. And, Father, I am just the messenger. It is your message. And I pray, Father, that you would put in my mind the words you'd have me to say. You would take from my mind the words you'd have me not to say. And I pray, Father, in heaven that you'd be glorified in my efforts. Hide me behind the cross. I pray, Father, in heaven that your word would have free course in our life, that your word would be glorified this morning. And we give you the honor, we give you all of the glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A distraught, miserable man was looking for help and he sought counsel of a liberal minister. Looking at the unhappy condition of the man, the minister said, just forget about those things in your life. He said, why don't you go down to see that famous comedian who's appearing at that local comedy club. I hear that... He's keeping everyone in stitches. Why don't you go down there and listen to him and laugh a little bit and you'll forget about all of your troubles. After a moment of silence, the man said, I am that comedian. <laughs> you know, the reality, reality is that people are looking for happiness. There's not an individual that is not under the sound of my voice this morning that does not want to be happy. 
We all want to be happy. Now, happiness in the Bible is very different than happiness that the world talks about. If the bills are paid, if, if no one cuts you off going to work in the morning, if, you know, maybe you have your way in your life, and if all of these circumstances align in your life, then you believe that you would be a happy person. But happiness in the Bible is much different. Nathaniel Hathorne said happiness in this world, when it comes, comes in accidentally. Make it the object of pursuit, and it leads us to a wild goose chase. It is never attained. Follow some other object and possible, uh, it is possible we'll find it if we have caught happiness without dreaming of it. Now, now think about this. Happiness is never sought after. Now there are people in this world who are searching for happiness. And there are what Canada would call or America would call the pursuit of happiness. And they are seeking diligently to be a happy person. And so as they search for happiness, there are job changes, there's home changes, sometimes sadly there's spouse changes. And through all of this searching, they're looking for just happiness in their, in their life, and yet they always come up wanting. They never find that happiness that they're looking for. Now I'm not talking about circo, circumstantial happiness. There are things in my life that make me happy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a fulfillment in your life. I'm talking about completion in your life. I'm, I'm talking about happiness that is deep down in your soul. Now, the Bible gives us the thought of happiness. It uses many times in, in the Word of God the word blessed. Blessed is the man. And it really gives us an understanding of what happiness is talking about. We're, we're talking about happiness that is deep down in our, our heart and in our soul. Happiness is not something we pursue. Happiness is a result of something. Ha happiness is, is a reward of something. Now, the Bible says in our text in Psalm 144, in case you missed it, the Bible says in verse 15, happy is that people. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. The word there, happy, is the Hebrew word asher. 27 times in the Bible it's translated the word blessed. 18 times in the Bible it's translated the word happy. The definition of this word is to be delighted, to be pleased or glad over a particular thing. It is cat categorized by an indicative of pleasure, contentment, or joy that is found deep in the soul of an individual. It is completion. It is fulfillment that is found in the life of a person. Attending a wedding for the first time, a little girl whispered to her mother, why is the bride dressed in white? The mother thought for a second and said, because white is the color of happiness, and today it is the happiest day of the bride's life. The child thought for a moment and said, then why is the groom wearing black? <laughs> happiness. We want to be a happy people. And the word of God tells us in this passage of scripture, happy is that people. Now, as I read this passage of scripture, I want to be a part of that people. I want fulfillment in my life. I want completion in my life, not circle circumstantial happiness, not happiness one day and, and happiness not the, another day. I want, I want completion, fulfillment. And so as I began this study in the Word of God, as I look through the pages of the Word of God, I want to give to you this synopsis, this, this finding that God gives to us and how we can be that people how we can be a happy people. First of all, I want us to notice this morning, if you're taking notes, that we find the hopeless pursuit of, of happiness. The hopeless pursuit of happiness. I want you to turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 in your Bible this morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and I want us to notice what the Bible says. It is the words of Solomon. He is declared in the word of God as the wisest man of his age. And uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse number 12, the word of God says in the 12th verse, I the preacher. Now this is Solomon writing here, penning under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. He says, I the preacher was king over Israel and Jerusalem. 
the Bible says in verse 13, and I gave my heart to seek and to search. Now, you know, a wonderful thing about the Bible is if the Bible was forged as some men would claim, then why does the Bible focus and, and give to us the reality of man? It doesn't hide anything. It doesn't try to paint a beautiful picture of mankind or humanity, but it gives people uh, it, it, it teaches us and shows to us the reality of people. And, and here in this passage of Scripture, Solomon is looking for happiness. He's looking for contentment. He's looking for fulfillment in his life. And he says in this passage of Scripture, verse 13, And I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail have God given to sons of men to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I mean, Solomon is seeking happiness. He's looking fulfillment. He's looking for fulfillment. He's looking for a complete life, and he's and he's searching all of the means that he had possible in his life to, to seek out this happiness. Some would say that, uh, someone would suggest that Solomon make a complete search. Did he succeed? Well, we know about Solomon, he was the wisest man of his age. He was the leading scientist of his day. Not only was Solomon a, a, a wise man, but, but also he was a, a literary genius. I mean, he was a walking encyclopedia. The Bible says that he spoke 3,000 proverbs. He was a wonderful songwriter, the greatest songwriter who ever lived. His songs were 1,005 in and, 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 and 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 32. And it, 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 also was, it is also true of Solomon that he tasted and, and uh, he, he was a part of every physical and, and mental joy of life. The Bible says that he, he, he tampered with pleasures. Look what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse number 1. Uh, the Bible says, I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. The thought there of mirth is pleasures. And so he says, I'm going to test pleasures in this world and see if pleasures fulfill me or give me happiness. And he said, therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. You know, the, the, the philosophy of Solomon was eat and live and be merry for today we die. And that was the life that he lived. And so he, he, he tampered with, with, with pleasures in his life. A, a, a hedonism is an into a, a belief that pleasure is the chief goal of life, hedonism. They live their life for pleasures of this world without ever thinking of the consequences of their action. And we see this in the world today. And, and Solomon in this, this search for, for, for happiness, he says, I'll check pleasure and see what I find. The Bible says in verse number 10 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld my, not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was the portion of all my labor. The Bible says he tried pleasures. He tried education, wisdom, and learning. Uh, the Word of God says he tried Material gain, he, he built houses for himself. The Bible says he built houses. The Bible says he even built the temple of the Lord. He, he built wonderful gardens. He built amazing structures, palaces, and, and government buildings. Uh, I, I mean, the Bible says he was involved in all of the structure, all of this building. He says in verse 17, therefore I hated life. I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. In fact, Solomon made this interesting point. He said, I do all of this work and I build all of these buildings and I, I do all of this labor and all that's going to happen is I do all of this work and I just leave it for the other guy. <laughs> I'm going to pass away from this world and another guy is going to have all of my work. And so he tells us that there's no happiness in building. 
There, there's no happiness and material gain as, as Solomon is, is searching for fulfillment deep in his heart. And as he comes to the end of all of this, he, he tried wealth, he tried material gain, he tried pleasures, he tried it all. And yet he said, at the end of my life, I was still wanting, I still wanted happiness. Now there's two important principles I want to show you, if I could this morning, that we learn from this, this vain search this empty search of Solomon. First of all, look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 24. I want us to notice uh, this important truth that Solomon teaches us as we think of these principles in being happy. The first principle is simple. The Bible says in verse 24, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink. That's the sustainment of life that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. Now, don't miss this important principle. The first principle is this, that it is important for us to be fulfilled in life. You see, God created us with a purpose, and that purpose was to glorify God. And, and God, uh, because of sin, we have marred that purpose, and, and we cannot truly glorify God the way we ought to because of our sin. And yet there's a wanting in our life. And Solomon understood that God wants us to be happy people. <laughs> God wants us to be fulfilled people. And so here Solomon realizes that it's important for our soul to be fulfilled and it's important for our soul to be completed. And so it's important to be complete in life. But second of all, he gives us this principle in verse 25 that fulfillment cannot be found without God. A fulfillment is empty unless God is involved. Look what the Bible says in verse 25. For who can eat? Or who else can hasten thereunto, uh, hereunto more than I? For God giveth to a man that is good in the sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. And so without God, we understand that happiness is, is God-given. And we understand that, that, that Solomon realized this because as he comes to the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. This is the completion of man. This is the fulfillment of man. And he realized that after all of his searching. But God is the judge, and, and God gives according to the decisions of man. The Bible says to those that are good or those who are obedient, God gives wisdom. And to the sinner or to the disobedient, God gives travail. And, and God is the judge. And Solomon comes to this important conclusion, and I don't want you to miss it this morning. He comes to this conclusion that if I seek wisdom, I come up wanting every time. And so it's important to understand that the, there's this hopeless pursuit of happiness. There's so many people today, you'll hear it all the time in articles and television and the testimony of people, I'm pursuing happiness. And they go through their life and they take things away and they add things and yet at the end of their life they're still wanting because you cannot seek happiness. You cannot. And that's what Solomon realized. There's the hopeless pursuit of happiness. But I want us to know the second of all as I continue to study this thought, and that is simply number two, there's the heartfelt praise of happiness. Now, let's go back to Psalm 144. We're going to go back to this text because this really is how it began as I began studying this passage of Scripture. And here we find in this passage of Scripture the psalmist is praising happiness. It's something that's dear to his heart. It's something that he wants for his people, for his kingdom. And here he says in verse 15, happy is that people that in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Now, in this passage of scripture, the psalmist desired happiness for his people. He desired happiness for his kingdom. He's, he's praying for, if you would, political success. He's praying for success in his military in verse 14 of Psalm 144. Notice he says, he speaks of the breaking in that no military foes would attack his nation, that there would be peace and that there would be safety. 
He's praying for success in his military and, and his army. In verse 13, he says, uh, he speaks of a nation that is uh, economically successful, that their, their gardeners may be full, that there's plenty of food, and that there's lots of money. That's a wonderful thing. In, in verse number 12, he envisions a nation with strong men and, and strong women. Look what the Bible says in verse, uh, verse 12. He says, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Hey, listen, the strength of any country is only as strong as the next generation. We understand that. And here he, he's, he's envisioning a nation with strong men and strong women. The, the Bible says that their sons would grow up as, 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 as plants grown in their youth and that the women would be daughters uh, as cornerstones polished after the, the similitude of a palace. In verse 14 again, he speaks of no complaining in the streets. That's a wonderful thing. God doesn't like complaining. <laughs> And here the psalmist is saying that he envisions a nation where there's no complaining in the streets, that there is a people with purpose, a people with fulfillment. Now, now think about that. When you have people who complain, you have people who are not fulfilled or don't have purpose. But if there's no complaining in the streets, then people are doing jobs, they're working hard, they have fulfillment in their life, they have purpose in their life, they have might and they have means. And here the psalmist makes this important statement. Now don't miss this as we think of a personal application. He says that true political stability and true stability, political stability and well-being must and is related to God. Any nation that departs from God sows the seeds of his own discontentment and his own disunity. And their happiness was not in all that they had, but all that they had was because they were happy. You understand what I'm saying? There was, there was no complaining in the street. There was military success. There, there was financial success. All of that was because they were fulfilled people. They were people that were complete. And he gives to us this praise of David. Happy is that people in this case. Why, David? Why are they happy? Because God is their Lord. Because they're looking to the Lord. A nation that is prosperous, a nation that is successful, is a nation that is filled and fulfilled and complete and content and the life that they live. Listen, contentment is not about having everything that you desire. Contentment is not having uh, your life the way you thought it would work out. Contentment is a stance, it's a place where you're resting in the Lord. And here the Bible is saying, blessed, happy are these people who rest in the Lord, who, who, who are happy because God is their Lord. And so what well, have we learned so far? Well, first of all, we learned that there's a hopeless pursuit of happiness. You can spend your entire life leaving this auditorium this morning and searching for happiness, and you'll come up wanting. We know that there's a praise, a heartfelt praise for, for happiness. It's important for our life. It's important for a nation. It's important for a church. It's important for a family. We're not talking about something that doesn't affect you. We're talking about something that's important. It's important to be fulfilled and to be happy. And so what is the answer to it? Well, there's a hopeless pursuit for happiness. There's a heartfelt praise of happiness. And I want to give you lastly, and I'm done this morning, I hope it'll help you, this helpful plan for, help, uh, for happiness. I want you to turn, if you would, to the book of Psalms once again, Psalm chapter 1. Now, when we think of the word happy in our Bible, we're talking about happiness that's deep in our soul, or fulfillment of life, completion of life. The same Hebrew word is also, as I mentioned before, translated as the word blessed. And it really gives us a, a wonderful uh, picture of what it means to be happy, to be blessed, or to be blessed. And so when we're talking about happy people, we're talking about fulfilled people. Now, God does not want us to be a miserable person. That's not God's plan at all. In fact, God made it very clear. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, that the thief cometh not 
but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. You say, to, to steal and to kill and to destroy what? Well, he gives us the answer. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And so the good shepherd gives life. The good shepherd gives fulfillment. The good shepherd, shepherd gives completion. But the thief comes to steal life. And the thief comes to destroy life. And the, the thief comes, uh, if you would, to, to kill life. And so really we have this meaning of our life that God wants us to be a fulfilled people. God wants us to be a complete people. But it is the work of the devil for you to be a miserable person. Now I say that to help you understand that it's not God's plan for you to, to not be fulfilled and complete. That's what the devil wants. He wants to rob that from you. He wants to steal that from you and he'll do whatever he can so that you will be a miserable person. But God wants you to have life but also God wants you to have abundant life. It's a wonderful thing. And so I want us to notice the meaning to life we understand, as we read these other passages of Scripture, that life is found in God and that, that happiness and fulfillment is found in God. But I want us to notice what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, and we're going to read uh, right to verse 6 here, to, to the, the end here. Uh, verse number 1, Psalm chapter 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now there's that word there, blessed, happy, fulfilled, complete, happy, blessed, is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. Now the ungodly are not so but are like the shaft that the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, I want us to understand what the Bible says in, in verse number 6. And if you're in the habit of marking in your Bible, would you underline that expression, the way of the righteous? Because remember, God wants to give you happiness. But the devil wants to take it away. And so therefore, as a good Bible student comparing Scripture with Scripture, we can bring these Scriptures together to say that the way of God is a way of happiness. But the way of the ungodly is a way of really a miserable life. And so we find in this passage of Scripture, happy is the man or blessed is the man. How do we have this happiness deep in our soul? Well, first of all, he speaks of his path. Look what the Bible says in verse 1. The Bible says that this godly man or this happy man is separated from the world. He does not listen to the ungodly man. He walketh not in the counsel of of the ungodly, the world, the, the unsaved, those who are against the Bible, against God. Listen to me, friend. That's a horrible place to get counsel in your life. And the Bible says that this happy individual doesn't listen to the ungodly counsel. He, he tells us in this passage of Scripture that he doesn't linger with sinful man. He standeth not in the way of sinners. He doesn't laugh at the scornful man, nor he sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now let's put it all together. The ungodly man in his counsel, the sinner has his way, the, the scornful has his seat. And we find the progression in wickedness, the ungodly to the sinner and to the scornful. And we also have the corresponding progression in backsliding, the life of a Christian, walking, then standing, then sitting. And here the psalmist is, is teaching us a wonderful truth to be careful who is your teacher. Now, now let's, let's continue. Not only do we find this, this progression or, or this pathway, but, but also we find his pleasure. Now, we're talking about the, the happy individual, the fulfilled individual. Look at this. We find his pleasure. He is satisfied with the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God has captured his full affection. This is his hunt in his life. He he's wants to know what God has to say. 
And every decision that we have and every decision in my life, before I get counsel from an individual whom I trust, I want to know what God has to say. And so we find in this individual, he delights in the word of God. He, he's hunting the word of God. God's word has captured his full affection, but, but also it has claimed his full attention. It speaks not only of his hunt, but it, it speaks of his hunger. The Bible says he, he meditates upon it day and night. And, and, and so really the thought of this passage of scripture, I don't want you to miss it, it, it is the source of your direction. It's the source of your information. I read this testimony of a man. He said a few, a few years ago, the battery of my beat-up Volkswagen Beetle had died because I left the lights on overnight. I was in a hurry to get to work on time, and so I ran into the house to get my wife uh, to give me a hand starting the car. I told her to get into our second car, a prehistoric oversized gas guzzler, uh, to use it to push my car fast enough to start it. I pointed out that because the Volkswagen uh, had an automatic transmission, it needed to be pushed at least 30 miles an hour to start. She said, fine. She hopped into her car and drove off. I sat there fuming and wondering what in the world she could be doing. A minute passed by when I saw her in the rearview mirror coming at me at about 40 miles an hour. Then I suddenly realized I should have been a bit more clear on my directions. <laughs> you know, the truth is this. This is, what, this is what the Bible is trying to teach us. Happy is the man who gets their source of direction from God and not from the ungodly world. You know, if you want fulfillment in your marriage today, then you need to ask God what he has to say about marriage. If you want fulfillment in a career, then you need to see what God has to say about careers. If you want fulfillment in ministry, then you need to ask God and see what the Bible says about what God has to say about, about, about ministry. If you want fulfillment in your retirement, then you need to see what God has to say about that. You see, I'm trying to help you this morning and I want us to understand that fulfillment of life, blessed is the man, complete is the man that gets their source of direction from the Lord, that, that gets their understanding about life and, and, and about, about walking with God and about all the issues of our life from him, not from the ungodly world, not for the ones that hate the Bible, not from the ones who maybe, be, uh, maybe are, are, are sheep or are wolves in sheep's clothing, but I'm saying to you, this morning that we must ask God what the Bible says about these things. Blessed is this man, fulfilled is this man. Now, he's not done yet. Look what he says in verse number three. You see, we find this prosperity. Look what the Bible says. And he, this is the blessed man, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Now, now notice this. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The Bible teaches us that, that he's strong or she's strong. He's sustaining or she's sustaining. And he's successful or she is successful. And it really is a powerful recipe for happiness and success and completion and fulfillment in the Christian life. A world without God, my friend, is like a jigsaw puzzle with one piece missing. I don't know if you've ever, you know, taken a, a jigsaw puzzle from the closet. I've done this, and I start putting together the jigsaw puzzle, and you get to the end, and there's one piece missing. That's so frustrating. <laughs> you want to complete it. You want it to be fulfilled, to be done. And yet the world who's in this pursuit of happiness, oh, they get some happiness here and they get some happiness there. But at the end of all of it, there's just that one piece missing. And they're not complete and they're not fulfilled. And they have this, this life of seeking. And yet the Bible teaches us that happy is the man. It's a good thing to have fulfillment. And yet how is it found? It's found by obeying the Lord, by following his word, and trusting in him. I'll give you one more passage of scripture and I'm done this morning. Colossians chapter two. If I could bring it all together, Colossians chapter two. 
And let's look what the Bible says in verse number 7. Colossians chapter 2. Happy is that man. Happy is that woman. We're talking about fulfillment. Look what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse number 7. The Bible says rooted and built up in him. That's Jesus Christ. And established in the faith as ye have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, We talked about this. Remember, complaining is not a fulfilled person. Complaining about life or complaining about a job or complaining about this or that or the other thing, that's not a person that's complete. That's not a person that's fulfilled. And the Bible says that this Christian is abounding. They're built up in Jesus. They're they're abounding with thanksgiving and thankfulness out of their lips. Now look what the Bible says in verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, man's opinion, and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Be careful where you get your information. Is it from God or is it from the world? And here the Bible is saying that to be careful lest they spoil you of what? What would they spoil you of? Fulfillment, completion in life. Look what the Bible says in verse number number nine. For in him, that's Jesus, dwelleth all of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye, verse 10, are complete in him. That's a wonderful passage of scripture. We are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And so as we come to the end of this message, let me ask you this question that only you and God knows the answer. Are you a fulfilled person? Are you a a happy person? Well, Pastor Burns, I just really don't like the job. I mean, it has nothing to do with a job, nothing at all. It has to do about being built up in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about walking with the Lord. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Do you know that heaven is your home? If some unseen circumstance was to happen to you even today, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven? You say, well, Pastor Burns, you cannot know that. You can, and the Bible teaches us you can. These things are written that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Are you following after God? Where are you getting your information about life? Are you getting it from the Lord? God, help us today to be a part of these people. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman that delights in the law of God.